Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we are proud to announce that LaunchBox version 12.2 has been released. And like with all new releases, we've got some fixes, improvements, and with this one here, we do have some really awesome new features that'll definitely help out with new users coming over to LaunchBox. If you're interested in checking out all of the new fixes and improvements for LaunchBox 12.2, I will leave a link to the changelog in the description, but in this one I really want to jump right into the new features because these are really awesome. And the first one being, RetroArch can now be automatically downloaded and installed via the ROM import process. Now with LaunchBox 12.2, we have the ability to just click a couple buttons and get RetroArch installed and set up with LaunchBox. That way, all you really need to do is import a couple games and you can be up and playing in no time. And this is definitely going to help out new users. So what I have here is a fresh install of LaunchBox. I don't have any games, I don't have any emulators or BIOSes installed or anything like that ready to go with LaunchBox just yet. But obviously, since we're using this, we definitely want to play some retro games, so let's go ahead and get into it. First thing I'm going to do is import a game. I'm just going to go with something simple, we'll choose next here. I'm just going to add a PlayStation 1 game. We'll go with Bloody Roar. We'll choose Next. Platform for the games I'm importing is Sony PlayStation. We'll choose Next. And like I mentioned, I don't have any emulators installed, but LaunchBox is now going to prompt me if I want to automatically install and configure RetroArch. So we now have this downloader, and if you're a new user, I would highly recommend choosing Automatically Install and Configure RetroArch. This is recommended. We're going to choose this one here. And along with the new RetroArch integration in LaunchBox 12.2, it's also going to prompt us for our BIOS. So right now, I don't have any PlayStation BIOS installed, but LaunchBox has detected that, and it's going to ask me where my PlayStation BIOS is. It gives me the name here, scph5501.bin. I'm going to browse, and I have one located directly on my desktop for easy access. We'll just choose this one, choose Next, now we're just going to finish up with the import process. And as you can see, I'm just importing a single game for this news video. We'll choose Finish. And now, LaunchBox is automatically going to download and configure RetroArch for me. It's going to import that game. I've showed it where my PlayStation BIOS is. And as soon as this first import is finished, and it's downloaded RetroArch for me, I can actually start playing that PlayStation 1 game immediately. It's now downloading and installing RetroArch for me. And there it is. We've got our first game imported. RetroArch was downloaded for me automatically. I've set up that BIOS. And if I just click on this game here, it's going to start it up in RetroArch for me. And I'm playing my very first game in LaunchBox within a few minutes of installing everything. So yeah, this is a really awesome new feature, and it's definitely going to be a big help to new users. It just makes it easier than ever to get into LaunchBox and start playing. But this can also help out existing users. So right now I'm on my main LaunchBox build. I'm going to head back up to my Tools, Manage, RetroArch, and we can reinstall or we can update RetroArch from here. So if I choose Update, automatically going to update it for me. And now for my main build, RetroArch is fully up to date. And like we saw while I was importing that PlayStation 1 game in my fresh build, we've added those new BIOS file prompts. So if you're importing a game and using RetroArch that requires a BIOS, it's going to tell you which BIOS you need, and you can import it right there while you're importing your game. Just makes it really streamlined. Another new feature that we've added to LaunchBox 12.2 was actually number 5 most voted on our new community poll. And what this allows us to do is limit how many images you wish to download per image group in the Download Metadata and Media Wizard. So when you're importing games, we have this image download limit per image group. You can set this to as high as you want or no limit at all. Out of the box, it's set to no limit. But here's our groups right here, our 3D boxes, our back covers, our arcade control panels, and things like that. I'm just importing a single game right now. Out of the box, it's set to no limit, but we can go up as high as we want here. It's really up to you, or you can just set it to 1 if that's all you want to download per image group. This is going to save bandwidth on our internet connection, and it's also going to save some storage on our hard drive. And along with the new limiter feature, if you're a premium user, you can always head over to your options inside of LaunchBox. We're going to go to Options here. From Media, we have our image priority. So our box front priorities, we can deselect anything we do not want to download per uh, game. Let's just say you wanted to have the box front and a 3D box. Kind of same goes for the back of the box. If you don't want any fan art, 
you can always deselect it in here. And this will just set our media or image priorities right here from the options if you're a premium user. And the final two things I wanted to show off for LaunchBox 12.2 have to do with the new menus. If you've been using an older version of LaunchBox, some of you might have noticed that these menus now look a lot cleaner, and that's the whole point. Everything's been reorganized to make it a little easier to navigate through all of these menus that we have here. Personally, I'm a big fan of this new setup. I really like that imports here at the top. We don't have to scroll all the way down to get to our import or anything like that. We also have this view section, and from the arrange by, if I want to go arrange by developer, I can do ascending and descending by just choosing this right here. So it does make it a lot easier to navigate through all of the games that you have installed. And I know a lot of you have a ton of games installed. Another improvement that's been brought to LaunchBox 12.2 has to do with the badges. In the past, we had to disable each one of these individually. But uh, now, if we go up to the menu, we get a view, badges, game attributes, we can just press it once, it's going to disable all of those storefronts for our PC games and controller support. So we can disable all the badges with one click and then we can go through and just find which badges we want to enable from here. But yeah, with this new reorganization of these menus, it should be a lot easier to get to what you want to do inside of LaunchBox. So yeah, with LaunchBox 12.2 and the new integrated RetroArch downloader, I think this is going to make it easier than ever to get up and running with LaunchBox and BigBox. We don't have to head over to a different browser or anything like that, place the correct files in the location. We can just go right here, install, we can update once we need to update RetroArch. And for newer users coming over to LaunchBox and BigBox, you can be up and playing your favorite retro games in no time. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we do have a lot of improvements and fixes with 12.2. If you're interested in reading through that change log, link for that is in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and we hope you enjoy LaunchBox 12.2. And like always, thanks for watching.